Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Tesla Motors Club podcast. I'm Doug. I'm Mike. Today, we're going to talk about Tesla reducing the cost of uh, the monthly subscription for FSD down to 99 bucks. What are the reasons, the implications of that? Uh, also, Tesla has been doing free trials of FSD. Um, possibly the Model 2 is canceled. Who knows? Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that uh, and much more. Uh, episode number 62 starts now. Mike, how's it going? It's going well. I think Lewis has some competition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Lewis couldn't make it today, but uh, that's fine. We uh, we got some things that, uh, you know, we should chat about. Um. So, uh, hey, uh, you know, there was this big uh, eclipse uh, just uh, last week. Really? Did you, get to, did, you, <laughs> <laughs> did you get to see it? I did. I did. I, I was, I, I had my shades on and I was actually sitting in my Tesla looking up through the roof, enjoying the view. You, you <laughs> with, did that? With the, with the AC on. <laughs> wait, wait, you did that? I did it. I know no, a few other cause, people did cause, it. Because I did it. Um, yeah, I did it. Here, check this out. Um for our uh for there you our, go uh, let me <laughs> for our uh audio listeners uh yeah so we, we have doug in the full recline position <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was it was pretty nice um like, so where did you where did you see it did you stay home so, or did you go somewhere i was home i was home i was in uh roughly los angeles you know area so we had about a 45 percent coverage okay uh, at, so at not peak not that much i guess um yeah, just enough to let us know what's happening so i uh at the time i wasn't i'm, I'm in like right now i'm in the dc area where, where i have some fam family and uh here i think it was up to 87 percent coverage nice and i was trying to decide where to go originally i thought i would drive to texas again but that's at least a two-day thing uh for me and um and then the forecast, I kept checking the forecast. Yeah, it got closer and closer. Like Texas was under cloud cover and nasty. They were, you know, calling for thunderstorms. And, and uh, so it wasn't looking like it would be great. Um, the closest thing for me would be Ohio. And so, okay, do I go there? Um, Niagara Falls seemed like it might be cool, you know, and that's that not work. that bad of a drive. Um, so I was trying to decide where to go. But, and, uh, you know, being a little bit last minute about it, I just looked at a map for Air, uh, Airbnbs and because <laughs> everything was ridiculously expensive. Hotels were ridiculous experiences, anything along the path of totality. But I found a little town called Wooster, Wooster, Ohio. Wooster. Wooster. Not, <laughs> not Wooster as in, uh, you know, near Boston, which is actually spelled more like Worcester or whatever, but, uh, actually spelled Wooster, like W O O S T E R okay. Wooster, Ohio. And there was an Airbnb there for like, uh, a little over a hundred bucks a night. And I'm like, okay, let me try that. Uh, and I went there and, um, and nearby it was a, um, uh, a campus, like a, a auxiliary campus of OSU of Ohio state university, the Wooster campus. And so I went there and, uh, that's pretty you were, cool. You were, you were doing that in direct defiance of what the authorities were telling EV owners to do, which was to stay home because of our EVs. Now that, that was just, <laughs> that was plain nuts. Now I'll tell you what I did do though. Um, I mean, I drove there the day before, okay. um, and I left, you know, in the morning I got there mid afternoon. I needed, you know, I was able to leave with near hundred percent. And I only really needed one charging stop to make that distance. It's about a seven hour drive. I only really needed one stop, but I didn't know what, just looking at the supercharger map, there weren't superchargers, like the closest supercharger was within like an hour and a half or something of, quite of Worcester. Quite a ways. <laughs> yeah. And I didn't know about charging at my Airbnb. So I just made sure that the last stop, um, I, I took another stop just before getting there and you know filled up you know charged up to like 90 percent or so now do you carry a ccs uh, i don't adapter? i don't okay. my car needs some kind of they need to do some kind of software thing or something to my car <laughs> to you, be able to you, you need to the bundle of wires with the board 
Yeah, I haven't bothered. I didn't. I haven't really seen the need for it. Um, also, right now, I have free supercharging as one of the um, one of the perks for um, which I just activated as one of the um, referral perks um, nice. before I took this trip. Um, so yeah, I I charged up, but you know, what? in the neighborhood, there were um, there were like Tesla um, destination chargers. So just oh, the handy. Yeah, the night before, I just went there and charged, you know, at, uh, it was like, it was kind of slow. It was like well, seven kilowatts, but um, I just had dinner and that charged me up pretty well. And then the next day after the eclipse, I went and, and charged at the same place now, again for a couple hours. And Did you, know, you see fine. the news after the eclipse? Because Newsweek had this big color spread about this, this poor gal that showed up at a supercharger with 1%. And sixty cars in front of her, where where you know all the Teslas were stacked up trying to get charging. Yeah, you know I was anticipating that kind of thing, or even just traffic. So I didn't leave immediately after uh, immediately after the eclipse. I um, I stuck around. Actually, I thought I, I needed to be back uh, in in Maryland D.C. by Tuesday morning. So I thought I'd like leave at like two o'clock in the morning or something. <laughs> <laughs> and instead I end up leaving at like, I, I tried to nap. I just, I can't do it. So I ended up leaving about like 10 PM, but I was checking to see what the traffic looked like. And on my way back, I mean, I ended up leaving like around 10 PM and it's the middle of the night. So I had no problem yeah. charging and I had no traffic except for, you know, the kind of semi trucks that drive late at night. And, um, the main thing to consider when you're doing a lot of driving at night is, uh, uh, is uh if you need a, uh, a pee break right because because uh, <laughs> the first supercharger stop well, i was at it was at a uh, uh you know like a mall that's completely shut down it was like the parking lot of a of a big shopping oh, center so, mall or so whatever. malls shut down empty vacant and you're in you're in the parking lot by yourself <laughs> yeah yeah well i was traveling with a friend but yeah so it's like okay uh no bathroom so then it was like okay let me play with what what are the superchargers and find the ones that are at the the proper highway rest stops that have like a 24-hour bathroom thing and so that's what i did and uh and it was fine and um you know i just have to say you know before we move on the eclipse was really awesome <laughs> <laughs> i mean i mean it was seriously it was seriously something else uh i you know, I've never seen a, a total before and, um, you know, I've seen plenty of partials and oh, yeah. the difference between 99% coverage and a total eclipse is like, you know, <laughs> it's like one is like a billion times better. I mean, it really is. And that's what everybody was saying. I didn't necessarily believe them, but it was pretty awesome. You take off your glasses and you could see, you know, like solar prominences and, uh, that's that was cool. That was something else. And it was, you look around you and it's like a 360 sunset, you know, uh, and, um, and it got cold. I had to put my jacket on and there were some dogs there that started freaking out, you know, they're, they're, they're not like uncomfortable <laughs> with, what, yep. with what was going on. And, uh, it was something else. And we had totality for about three minutes or so. And yeah, it was uh, pretty phenomenal at this point. I'm, I'm definitely thinking about traveling for the next one. Um, there's one in 2026 that goes through Iceland and like Portugal and Spain. That would be fun. That and I'm, fun. I'm thinking I'll, I think I'm thinking I'll go. Um, so, so, so I got to ask, so, so mm -hmm. you leave at 10 o'clock, it's nighttime. Mm -hmm. Did you use FSD when you drove at night? Oh yeah. I use it all yeah. the time. <laughs> now, did you use the new, did you use the new FSD? This is yeah. our segue. <laughs> yeah, no, good job. That, that was the segue I wanted to do. I just needed to stick in the point that the, the eclipse was freaking awesome. And if you missed it, you missed out and travel a, for the next one. It's a great point. It's a great point. Yeah. It's um, absolutely true. Yeah. So FSD, uh, so FSD 12 now um, at the time. So, so I, I it's think out it was, for everybody. So everybody with yeah. a Tesla that can run FSD should either have gotten it by now or be on the list to get it shortly. Right. And now I had gotten FSD 12 and then I got another update that, that put me on, um, the branch, uh, like the, the 2024 branch. Cause the previous FSD I had was the 2023 branch, you know, but I think they synced yeah. them all up. So, yeah. um, it is definitely a lot more human than FSD 11. Like it feels more confident. 
Um, and I, I really appreciate that. It still has some quirks. Um, Absolutely. And, <laughs> and version 11 did this before, but you know, I'm driving at night and this is so annoying because you got to be able to figure this out. I get constant um, alerts that, oh, a camera may be occluded. You know, FSD may be <laughs> degraded because a camera may be occluded. And it's, it's, it beeps like every like two minutes, doo -doo -doo. F, you know, camera may be occluded. The camera's not occluded. The issue is it's pitch black out. All right. Correct. I'm on some rural road somewhere and no the car way. can't, <laughs> it, it can't see anything to the side, I guess. And so, the, so I, I was actually on the other end of that. So mm -hmm. we've had a lot of rain and fog and, um, inclement weather and FSD between trying to flash its high beams in fog, which mm -hmm. just blinds me and the car. And the fact that as soon as it sees raindrops, it says, oh, FSD may be degraded because of, you know, bad weather. <laughs> yeah. So, so, I mean, I, I've had that, but it, it in that case, it may actually be degraded, right? Because it's foggy or it's rainy. I get the issue where it, the sky is just gray, but you still see fine. It's just there's cloud yeah. cover, no rain. And it says it might be degraded, which <laughs> is a, a failure of, of proper training, right? Um, just because the sky is gray, the road is yeah. bone dry. There's no reason for FSD, FSD to be degraded and for me to get that You would message. think so. But um, yeah, and you get that message pretty often too. But this is just so annoying. The camera's not covered, okay? It's just that it, it's pitch black, okay? It should be able to somehow tell the difference. And that's maybe the, you know, the downfall or the, you know, the limitation of a passive sensor. Like if it had uh, LiDAR, it could be able to tell that it could send a signal out. But then, Gee, then again, if there's nothing we, for a long we, way, we had radar at one time until somebody decided <laughs> well, we didn't need it. <laughs> yeah, but there, I'm assuming it's a side uh, <laughs> camera because the rear ha sees something. The rear cameras definitely see something, and the front cameras see something because I have my headlights. So it must be must be like a pillar, a B pillar camera or something. Pillar, just yeah. just looking into the pitch black, and yeah, it it needs to be a little smarter. Um, so I don't know, uh, th that, that's annoying. Um, but the other thing that is quirky that's new is um, I find it was missing more turns or making more wrong turns. I'm not really sure why, but- uh, mine, but, mine has missed three turns, one on ramp and two turns. Completely yeah. missed it, just- Yeah, no exactly. Reason. I mean, like I it just it, forgot to turn. <laughs> well, I feel like part of it is it's trying to be a little more human in that it's waiting longer to get in the in the proper lane and then by the time it's supposed to maybe it just can't do it uh maybe it just can't get over in time but sometimes i feel like it just it just gave up or just didn't even bother and so, i'm like why did you miss that turn <laughs> i i had one where it i had a um three lanes one mm -hmm. left one center to go through the intersection one to go to the right and i needed to go through the intersection the map showed it the little graphic indicator said I was going to go through the intersection, but the car still went into the right lane, realized it was in the wrong lane, and then literally stopped halfway out and threw up its hand and says, I can't do this anymore, disengaged. <laughs> so, yeah, not, yeah. not the best experience. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, those kind of things have happened before. So it's just it just forces me to be a little more um, attentive uh, on those sort of things. Uh, Overall, it's much better. Um, but one thing <laughs> that apparently it's not only me, it's happened to other people, is that occasionally it uh, takes a turn and it cuts the corner a little bit I've, too sharp. I've heard, I've heard that. I've seen pictures, a lot of pictures. <laughs> okay, I've had no damage yet because of that. But for one example, I was leaving a parking lot and it took the, took the turn a little bit hard and had a hard drop because I actually climbed yeah. off the edge of the, of the curb. Um, there's another spot where I have to make a left turn across a two lane highway and it's cutting to the left a little sharper than it needs to be. And there's literally a ditch like, uh, you know, right there. And I'm not, basically not having, to hit. <laughs> I'm having to grab the wheel to not, uh, drop in that, that hole, or at least have my, my rear left tire go in that hole. Um, so that's a little concerning, but definitely it's progress, right? Um, uh, I, I've put something in the neighborhood of 800, 900 miles on, on FSD since I've gotten the new 12 upgrade. And I'll say on the open highway, I'm 
pleased with it. Generally speaking, it's, it's generally very good. It's gotten better about not changing lanes every five minutes. I don't have to tell it through the dash. You know. Okay. So one thing to point out though, on the open highway on, yep. on like, you know, the freeway part, the part that's not what used to be the part that's not city streets or whatever. Yes. I, as far as I understand, that's unchanged. Um, so the, the only part I, that I've heard that, but the car mm -hmm. run, the car is behaving differently. So well, they might have they might have updated it, but like the things like the auto speed adjust stuff that doesn't happen I, when you're on the on the freeway. No, no. I'm I'm talking about so, like so one of the things that used to really irritate me with the older FSD is it was mm -hmm. constantly juggling lanes. It was always trying to find a, a way around people in front of me. So yeah, I'd have to go in on almost every trip and swipe the the little menu selection, telling it to chill out and stay in your lane. I don't have to do that hardly at all now. So something's changed behind the scenes. The other thing I've noticed is the car wants to hover to the right a lot more than it used to. Um, yeah, I've seen that on local streets. I've seen that on local streets. I'm freeway, like, why? <laughs> and like, why are you so close to the curb? And then there's also, there might be a line of parked cars. And like, why are you, why are you pushing so close yeah, there? So, so it's hard to, it's hard to know. Like these things aren't supposedly aren't so directly um, programmed in, right? It's more the training data. Supposedly. So, <laughs> uh, so the, the level of control is, it's kind of more of a fuzzy knob, you know? Uh, yeah. so, and, and the, and the understanding of why it does things is more obfuscated. So. Um, just, just for the viewers and listeners, uh, who might be interested in 2023, Tesla announced in, in a deck that they released that they have over 400,000 people driving with FSD. That was mm -hmm. before the current release for everybody else to have 30 days to go play. Um, it'll be interesting to see what comes of all that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so Tesla has opened up FSD as a free $9. trial. Yeah. What's that? I, I'll be curious to see how much of an uptake they're going to have for ninety nine dollars after the free trial's over, because they cut the yeah. price. They went from one so, so these to ninety nine. These things are integrated. First, let, let's talk about this free trial. Um, sure. You know why do it? Uh, I, I mean, I think Elon maybe has renewed faith in it, and I, I think the main reason must be money, right? Um, uh, if they're on a sales slump um as they predicted predicted uh then you know fsd is pretty much free money as we've talked before in that yes and that all the cost is already baked in uh, so it's all uh you know capital expense that's already happened so anyone either buying fsd straight out or or paying for a subscription it's essentially yeah. free money for them right yeah so they a want people to money. do that <laughs> um so giving it away for a month it's like you know giving you that little taste and then do you want it but I mean, we're not so sure if it's been exactly positive. Um, I, I, I've only talked to people that haven't used it before. And I, well, the one anecdote I have is not very great where, uh, my friend's mom, uh, you know, my friend turned it on for her mom. Right. <laughs> and, uh, and so they have no experience of it. Right. They haven't seen any video about it. They don't really know about it, right? Like the people that actually buy it, I think are, are self-selected to know a lot more about it. Uh, and now you have a bunch of people that, you know, I've said before, I wouldn't have my grandma, you know, I don't yeah. have any grandmas left, but I wouldn't have my grandma driving it because uh, you really have to understand the system. And so, yeah, my friend's mom is turned on, they're on the highway, and then the car starts changing lanes and All she's by surprised by that. <laughs> yeah, she's surprised by that. So she's trying to fight it right well the way fsd works is it, it really is fighting you right you you have to supply yeah, yeah. quite a bit of torque to to get over it <laughs> and it's like it's like playing tug of war and your opponent just drops the rope it's like you're working really hard and then your opponent drops the rope and then you get yeah. uh, you get jerked back right um so you know she's she's trying to turn against it and then all of a sudden it lets go and then she swerves into the next lane to her right. Like the thing is trying to make a change lanes to the left and she swerves to the right because, you know, it's overcorrected. Uh, that's terrible. Uh, and I've always found that to be a little bit troublesome. I would prefer if, if uh, FSD like was more gradual with the way it gave up, right? Instead of just 
all or none and you're like really having the force to overcome it, it should, um, it should somehow be gradual. I mean, as you're trying to get a, you know, you're, as you're trying to fight it, it should just like maybe instead of having a, dr a quick drop off, maybe just like kind of a, kind of a linear a, drop. Yeah. Something like that. Right. Yeah. So resist it a little bit. So you, people don't overcorrect, uh, cause that's a problem. Um, and I've done that myself, uh, just, you know, when I'm just trying to get over now, I I've learned, it's like, you learned that your opponent is going to drop the rope if they feel like they're losing, you know? <laughs> so, um, well, so I that, had to do it, you know, like we were just talking about too far mm -hmm. to the right. And I'm kind of leaning on the wheel a little bit and it all of a sudden just gives up and next yeah. time I, you know, swerve across my lane slightly and I'm expecting it and it still kind of swerves across. Exactly. <laughs> so for people that aren't expecting, I think that's a problem. I think there should be a bit more education about it. And the suggestion my friend had was like, like, look, there should be like a, a video or something that really explains this thing for newbies uh, in the car, right? Just in the car, it should offer this video. Uh, now Tesla does have these sort of, um, if you look for it, they're like these little um, like tutorial videos. It should be one of those videos, but then like at the spot where you're agreeing to it and they give you something to read, they should probably like, hey, watch this video. Are, are and you, are uh, you suggesting a mandatory video? Like we're not going to let you use FSD to you well, watch this ten minute training video to get at least somewhat familiar. I don't know that it needs to be mandatory, but I think it should be just like you know when you have a, a EULA, like an end user license sure. agreement, uh, and you got to scroll through the whole damn thing, and then you know you're not reading it, you're scrolling through the thing, and then you're pressing right. you, okay. You want to press the button when you do that. You know you're taking responsibility for okay. I didn't read the whole thing give them the video, start playing it, give you the opportunity to skip. You can skip it. You know, give it's like, uh, you know, the intro to your, your Netflix show. You want to skip the intro. Okay. Skip it if you want and then go on. But at least, you know, there was a video there that you could have watched. Um, I and I think more of the, uh, the training videos at work where I put it on times one and a half to speed it up just to get it done. Cause they won't let me skip. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, you could debate what, what's better, but I think, as a first step, it, there should be something. Uh, and I think they have made a video now. I think I saw on X, there was some kind of video, but, um, yes, yeah, just stick it in there, like make it part of the, um, make it part of the, uh, the, uh, accepting, like here's the, just make it available. Here's now, the video you could watch. Now, what do you make of the fact that the free FSD has been out for about three weeks now? Mm -hmm. So that was a major upgrade 12. Everybody was waiting for it. Within two weeks, we've got another upgrade, which is 12.3.4 that came out. Um, you think they're kind of paying attention to the feedback they're getting or are they just rushing? Um, I mean, I'm not surprised by that. If you, I, I don't even know, I've gotten it. I haven't even driven it. I bet it's very minor. There's nothing in the release notes. Like the release notes are identical oh, they're, they're to useless. the previous ones. Yeah, it's, it's, full, it's supervised full FSD. I mean, oh. So I, I, it doesn't surprise me that you open it up to a bunch of people and then they find something and, you know, they want to have an update. That's fine. Like, you yeah. know, update as often as you need to. Fine. You know, weekly, <laughs> every couple of days. That's <laughs> fine. If, the, if they have some minor uh, adjustment, then go ahead. Uh, but yeah. um, that doesn't surprise me. But yeah, that's the other thing. The name change, essentially, right? Instead of calling it FSD beta yeah. and beta, beta was a crutch. Now, <laughs> FSD supervised. Supervised. Full self-driving supervised. That seems that's an oxymoron, right? Like yeah, absolutely. it's absolutely <laughs> like why call it full self-driving if you have to supervise, supervise. it? Right? <laughs> that, that, it just makes no real sense. Uh, so yeah. I I, I don't a, know what that's a legal legacy. I'm sure from all the pressure they're under. Well, the FSD part is just uh, almost like trademark legacy, right? People are calling it FSD. That's what it's called, even though it's not, it's not what it is. You know, <laughs> it's like dolphin free tuna with dolphin in it. <laughs> you know, whatever. It's well, it's it's we just say dolphin free. That's just part of the name, even though there's dolphin in it. <laughs> Doesn't make a whole lot of sense. You know, you, you were you were mentioning um, that. There, there's been some changes with FSD and we've got the upgrades that are coming out and all this, but kind of buried in the news cycle uh, was a little blurb that the Model 2 was canceled. And yet Elon kind of popped up and said, nope, 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 nope. You know, you're all wrong. Um, 
that that seemed kind of almost out of place in the news cycle with everything else going on. Yeah, I you know, I I'm not really sure what the reasoning was. Well, I think Elon's hand was forced because there was some reporting by Reuters, um, and and his knee jerk reaction is to say that. Um, Actually, he said they're lying, as opposed to <laughs> as opposed to saying yeah, they're he was incorrect. Kind of blunt about it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're reported, right? Hopefully, they're not just straight up lying, right? Uh, it's they may have an incorrect report, uh, but they're lying it was kind of rough. But then, well, are they lying? Because then, at that point, he comes back to say that um, they're going to unveil the robo taxi on August eighth. August, yep. With which I bet is. Uh, was news to you know most of the people involved <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah the engineers um, just kind of went white at that point like oh my god <laughs> yeah so um i mean that'll be interesting I, i'm sure all it will be is uh we get to see a prototype you know it's fsd or full or level five self-driving even fsd supervised is still a level two system two. right yep. um we're not going to have a level five system in uh, what four months, right? Do, do, this is do not going to happen. Do you see the uh, the taxi as a distraction that the uh, the um, oh sports um, the roadster hasn't been released yet, despite all the promises? And well, that's another thing that's getting a a new unveiling, right? I forgot the date on that one. I don't uh, remember, but uh, I, mean, I, I mean, this is this has been like here and there and gone. I, well, he said now. he said they're going to unveil it at the end of the year. I don't know. I don't think it's a distraction <laughs> for that. I think it's a separate, it's a separate thing. Um, it's just that there was some news about the Model Two. I mean, the relation is that, and what we learned from the um, uh, Walter Isaacson book was that the, and again, we're calling it the Model Two. The Model Two is what many people are calling the cheaper vehicle, the the twenty five thousand dollar you know sort of lower cost um tesla and that that is the same platform as the robo taxi right um and that uh and elon had made an announcement that that would be uh unveiled already right yep. um yes he did so <laughs> yeah so uh so but the th i guess the thing is that oh well it'll be unveiled with the robo taxi at the same time um and you know what i think tesla could do pilot robo taxi things on the level of Waymo or, um, uh, or cruise, you know, these sort of geofence type things that are highly controlled. Um, I think, I think FSD 12 is probably good enough that, um, they could try to do those kind of trials. Um, and, and, uh, you know, low speed and, you know, I don't know what they might have some extra things where, an employee can, you know, you know, uh, look in and see what's going yeah, well, on in real time. Supervised FSD. That means you need to have a driver there. So, well, this might be supervised <laughs> remotely, kind of like uh, I think Cruise and, and Waymo maybe had. They uh, tried, the, but the ability for it. before a third person to see what's going on. Right? They, they're not necessarily in the car, but to to do it. So. I don't know. We'll see what, what that is. But I think, I think Elon had his hand forced. Um, uh, and I, and the other thing is, um, uh, you know, shareholders, like we're, it's, it's basically, you know, we have some dry times coming up here and, um, you know, to go back, like the price drop in FSD again, that's 99 bucks. Well, you know, pricing, uh, you know, reaction to pricing is not linear, right? It's, sure. it's some kind of very dynamic thing. <laughs> And uh, when you drop the price in half, it's not like you get twice as many customers. You get, you know, some, you know, well, e to the I, one I over price type thing. To see who, who and how many, because I know I've got probably five friends that picked up FSD in the last month, and to a person, not one is going to keep it. Um, they they yeah. are not impressed. Um, really not impressed. I mean, it's kind of funny because a hundred bucks is enough for people to try it out. I think, Absolutely. I think they got the ordering wrong. He should have, uh, dropped the price first and then seen what kind of people were going to try it up out. Uptake, uptake they had. And yeah, they should have done that first. And then if it, that was, if it was still desperate, uh, you know, uh, give a, give a free trial. 
Um, I bet plenty. I def if I didn't already have FSD, I would definitely spend a hundred bucks to try it out. Um, well, two hundred bucks starts to feel like a bit much, but a hundred bucks, I would definitely do it. Yeah, you know, um, I've spent two hundred on and off for the last two years. You know, a couple months here, a couple months there, and I always consider it to be a little pricey, but still a fair trade, especially on road trips. But you know, that hundred bucks—that's a sweet spot. You know, that's that's well within reason for a lot of people, I think. Okay, but now uh, it's also a bit problematic, right? Um, <laughs> FSD, you know, I think if you're going to buy it straight out, is it still is it still twelve k? Twelve thousand. It used to be fifteen k. Yes. Um, yes. When I got it, I think you end up having to pay. You had to get enhanced autopilot. That was back in 2018. That was five k, and then FSD, which got you no extra features, was another four k. Um, so that was nine thousand dollars back then. <clears throat> and I know of people that have gotten many Teslas and have paid repeatedly for FSD since. Yeah, because it didn't transfer. Yeah. Yeah, since uh, 2016 or something. Um, so. Uh, so some people are pissed, right? Because at, at a hundred bucks a month, um, you easily get to something that's cheaper than the expected lifetime of the whole car for people that pay for it. And if it's Agreed. not, if it's not something that's permanently transferable, um, well, not only you know, is those it people bucks a month, pissed off. but you're not locked into it. So I, yeah. well, for now I can pay my hundred dollars a month for one or two months, drop it, come back three months later, pick it up again for another month or two, drop it. I mean, that's quite literally how I've been doing it. Yeah. I mean, the other thing is I go on, I go away sometimes or go overseas for, you know, maybe a month or something. Right. Turn and, it off. Yeah. Turn it off. Um, now I, I have the, um, the connectivity that I'm paying 10 bucks a month for. Um, and you know, sometimes I'll turn that yeah, off, but that's but it's cheaper, 10 bucks, right? That, that's yeah, cheaper, it's cheaper than Spotify or any other <clears throat> streaming services I have. So. Right. But it's certainly a hundred bucks. You would turn that off if you weren't using it. Okay. Um, so yeah. So I mean, you, you had, uh, mentioned to me before that, uh, there's a bit of an outcry. So, uh, I mean, what, Red, what was Reddit that? has been in meltdown over it. <laughs> there's a lot of unhappy people that have paid for FSD and, and they're looking at this $99 fee going, what is up with this? But, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, <sighs> This uh, this announcement, um, you know, supervised full FSD, ninety nine bucks a month. That's been yep. put in contrast with with what Elon said. Uh, well, in twenty twenty, he said something very different. <laughs> yeah, so four years ago, uh, you know that, that it would always be going up. You know, <laughs> it would be going up, and then you know when it's when it's there, it'd be like you know the the value would be a hundred thousand um, dollars. Yeah, not so I much. don't know about that. <laughs> Hundred thousand dollars makes sense if you if you own the car and then you're making it in a, a robo taxi that pays you, right? Pays you everything, right? Yeah. That um never happened. You know, would I pay that much for a car that just drives me around? Maybe. Like I said, coming back from the eclipse, I was driving like I was driving from like uh like 11 p.m. to like 6 a.m. or something, right? So um, ridiculous. Somehow. And I and you know and part of that was okay. I wanted to leave later and not have to deal with uh, you know pileups at the chargers or even crazy traffic. And uh, and okay, so I did that. That was a choice I made. I probably could have left earlier, but whatever. Um, but would it be nice if I could have just napped, you know, and and not had to stay awake? Would that be sure. worth? A hundred thousand dollars, maybe. Um, you have but, to trust it enough that you can yeah. wake up from your nap. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. I, we're just not there yet, and and the, I don't know how long it will take us to get there. Um, you know, I'll just I'll just read what what Elon said. He said uh, this is back in May eighteenth of twenty twenty. He said the FSD price will continue to rise as the software gets closer to full self driving capability with regulatory approval. At that point, uh, that's a typo, I guess he means Grammar at that there, point yeah. is what he probably means. At that point, the value of FSD is probably somewhere in excess of $100,000. Uh, um, maybe. That's a stretch. In my mind, it's a stretch. Yeah. I, value is, is, you know, what are people willing to pay for it? So, 
you know, there certainly are some people that are willing to pay for a hundred thousand dollars for it, but you know, not everybody. Um, you know, I, you know, again, talking about prices and stuff, coming back to this model two thing, you know, one has to wonder, does that model two really make sense when right now I can buy a used model three for about really which barely, yeah, for <laughs> really roughly $20,000. Right. <clears throat> so it, it's a little hard to, uh, to square that circle. Like, does it really make sense doing that kind of investment? Um, you know, Cybertruck has tons of, uh, have ton has ton of demand, but it's really the mismatch of the, of their production, right? The production with demand. So, um, but you know, you, you feel like there are things that were Tesla has done to make things cheaper, but, uh, it, it just like, you look at the Cybertruck, for example, <clears throat> you feel like, okay, this is a premium vehicle. Why doesn't it have a, a binnacle display? Uh, why isn't the, the rear view camera, why isn't that in a display where the, the mirror is, you know, that's yeah, the natural yeah. thing that people would want. Um, sure. and so it doesn't, you know, the, the way they, they don't have those things and they're kind of obvious things to have, you know, this is a luxury vehicle, but you know, it doesn't quite have these obvious sort is of luxury it, things. Is it really a luxury? I mean, the model three was never a luxury vehicle. But no, the, the model three was, it. was, yeah. was never really a luxury vehicle. So that the price cost cuts made sense there, right? It makes yeah. sense for the model three, not to have a display though. I'd uh, a binnacle, you know, display in front of me, but I would love to have that option, you know, make it a extra cost option or something, uh, on this drive. Um, I got a, a little like magnetic, um, you know, um, uh, inductive charging thing that basically sits uh, right where the binnacle would be. And sometimes I put, uh, sometimes I put like Google maps on there just cause it's a little better with showing me traffic stuff sometimes. Sure. And it is really, really nice <laughs> to have a display right there. And it shows me my speed. It's using GPS to give me my speed. It's nice for it to be right in front of your face instead of looking to right. the side. And guess what? I'm on FSD, right? And I looked at the side. And I looked there just a little bit too long. It yells at me. Back. Put your eyes back. Yeah, it yells at me. I don't get yelled at for looking at a screen that's right in front of me. I get yelled at for looking at a screen that's to the side. So, hey, you know, that would be a nice option. And there's plenty of aftermarket for for a display there. The fact that that's not an option on, just by its price, not an option on the Cybertruck, um, it feels a little weird. Um, yeah. So, Uh yeah, someone yeah. asks, uh, electrified vehicles asks, also, why does Cybertruck not have a heads-up display? Yeah. Amen. I, Amen. <laughs> I mean, why why doesn't the Model S have a heads-up display? I mean, it's just or a, any of them. Any of them. I mean. Yeah. But, I mean, that would be, you know, your your sportiest high-performance vehicle that they offer right now. <laughs> you would think it would have that stuff. Like, you know, 3 and Y are supposed to be down market. I could see why it's not there, but... You know, come on. <laughs> These aren't new technologies. They at least make them they options. They are not. They are not. I mean, I can I can make a heads up with my iPhone for that matter. So, yeah, and maybe I will do that. <laughs> maybe I will do that. But uh, well, the the little the little magnetic thing of just putting my phone there was already that much of a better thing. Yeah, you're like, you're okay, heading I'll that direction anyway. That. So, <laughs> <laughs> like that's good enough. <laughs> oh man. Well, well, we got another story that's actually kind of interesting. Okay. And. Um, it, the uh, when I first read this, I thought at first it was a joke, but it actually turns out to be a real story. And that was a Tesla owner called the cops on some rivian owner who was charging at the supercharger. He actually called nine one one and complained to the police that this guy was in a Tesla only charger. How dare he? Well, that's what the sign <laughs> said. The sign said Tesla charging. Right. It does say Tesla charging, but um, let's be realistic about this. <laughs> you know. Um, that's funny because we expected there to be some animosity, but we're coming from our own bubble of actually knowing that we're expecting these these vehicles to start showing up. Absolutely. Here, here's a user <laughs> that it's a complete surprise. Um, and okay. again, I come back to how Tesla could use the car to, to provide educate. information. Yeah, for education, right? Instead of, um, I mean, obviously they can send you an email or a notification through the app. 
But hey, how about when you're navigating to a supercharger, you have just a little information yeah. bubble that you could by press. The way, you by the way, you other cars there. <laughs> exactly. By the way. And then and just give a little, like they already had a little reminder about um, charging etiquette, right? Basically the, the yep. urinal yep. rules, right? Um, <laughs> That's true. And, um, and so part of that could be, okay, you know, what are the, cause the rules should change, right? With once you have the, um, once you have the, uh, the, the Rivian, uh, how did I put it before? Oh, uh, the, uh, the high school lunch rules, right? <laughs> so instead of, instead of the, the urinal rules where you sort of maximize the space between everybody, yeah, yeah. right? With the high school lunch rules, you kind of split up into your, you know, here your jocks and your you nerds got your or whatever. Clicks. You got your clicks. Yeah. You, Rivians are over here. The yeah, exactly. Over there. <laughs> yeah. The, so the Rivians, at least one, were still right. on version three no cables. No commingling. They, they should, they should be all be on the right, say, so that, uh, you know, you know, you're, you're, you're taking up two charging spots, but when another one comes next to it, you've just taken an additional charging spot instead of yeah. now two, two cars more. taking four spots. Yeah. Right. Um, so yeah, just add a little education in the car, you know, let, let yeah. people know, Oh, we might see well, other vehicles. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for the poor Chevy bolt owner to show up on the 350 kilowatt charger and watch the Tesla people go off. <laughs> How dare you charge at 40 kilowatts? <sighs> Yeah. You know, I mean, you could do all this with education and software. Um, uh, part of the Rivian, part of the package, I guess, of, of Rivian getting access has been some kind of API uh, integration, right? Because the on the Rivian screens, they're getting navigation to the to, Tesla to chargers. The chargers. Yes. You, you could have additional information of suggested stalls. Like you should use this stall. This stall is available. Go to that stall number, right. you know, minimal, minimal impact. Use this one. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, I mean, if they really wanted to, they could, they could do that. They could slot everybody in, right. Especially people on trips. Uh, they already know well before they get there. That and, could be so useful. <laughs> yeah. Just, uh, instead of just, yeah give the suggested stall this is where you should go and maybe don't force them because you know what vehicle is what and you know where it plugged in then maybe update the information if somebody isn't quite hip to <laughs> to do it right um, so uh ev go actually allows you to do reservations on, on select chargers you can put your name in and you can reserve that charger at a certain time now i i haven't quite figured mm. out what happens if somebody actually gets in front of you and and plugs in and it doesn't work yeah, are actually going to move. Yeah, I mean, a reservation sounds like that sounds like a problem. <laughs> <laughs> um, that 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 idea is an old idea. Um, that idea goes back to um, actually even beyond just uh, charging um, for just sort of parking, city parking. There's a concept of reserving a parking space. So instead of, and, and this is a way of, of saving gas, right? Even on yeah. gas vehicles, right? Instead of circling around for parking spots, there's a spot and there's an app. I it just didn't, it, it didn't catch on, but there was an app that was attempting to do that for you to be reserve a parking spot. I think the way, it, I think the way it had to work was more of like the gig economy type thing where someone reserves a spot and then like some like a Postmates type person like Parks goes and stands and in the spot, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and I'm, I'm holding the spot for my boyfriend right, or whatever, right, you know? Right. Um, so, uh, but Travel that didn't work, that but, work. <laughs> but, but that's a great concept. But like, okay, I've reserved a parking spot and, um, you know, and you have 15 minutes to get there or whatever. And if, and if you don't make it in that time, maybe as you get closer, maybe you, you get directed to a different spot. So with GPS, you're going to, to a, you know, a specific parking spot that somehow is reserved for you. Um, so you could I do could something like that, that for charging. So it makes sense for level two for fast charging. I just don't see it, uh, Actually, not causing I, I trouble. I could see that. I could see. So, um, up by Kettleman on I five, they're putting in 96 stalls hmm. and I, I could see where the app telling you go to this stall would be a whole lot easier than cruising up and down. 96 stalls looking for the one open slot or the second open slot, you know, whatever there is. Yeah. So that's why I think, um, yeah, some kind of, uh, yeah. Telling you what stall to go to. I'm just not sure a reservation system. I mean, in a way that's a reservation system, but it would be a bit more real time. I don't think there necessarily should be a penalty if someone else has started charging, then it needs to just 
you know, direct you quickly, direct you to a different the spot. next one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, but you know, back to our poor ribbing owner, I, I kind of yeah. felt for him. <laughs> He's getting yelled at with police and everything else. Oh yeah. That's, that's terrible. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's taking a, it to 11 when it should have been. Like that's a, a, a that's one. a terrible experience <laughs> and it reflects poorly on the Tesla community. Right. Um, Without a doubt. Uh, you know, uh, we're all in it together, <laughs> you know, and uh, this used to be a big thing with uh, plug in America and have like little etiquette sheets and stuff like that, because it used to be it was only level two charging. Right. And you come up and your car is going to be there for hours and, yeah, so you know, you'd have to leave a little <laughs> note. It's OK to unplug me after this time or if you can see, yeah. you know, after I'm at this percentage or whatever. And then you get the, the jerks that show up and either they ice, you know, they block the whole thing. Or they unplug you and just plug in, not knowing what your situation is. Don't and then there's either. the whole yeah. issue if if you have a, a plug-in hybrid, if if you shouldn't even be there, what do you what are you taking up the spot? You can get gas, and this is my only way of fueling. You know, <laughs> uh, things were really desperate back then, uh, but it was also a smaller community. Um, but there was always a sense of having to educate the next wave of people that come in. Um, so. You know that's that's what the issue is here so yeah a little bit of education a little bit of uh oh, of uh but this, obviously common courtesy you're yelling at yeah. somebody you're calling the cops so, uh, electrified electrified light vehicles is it'd also be nice if there was a queuing system when there's a wait amen because i've seen yeah, definitely. some crazy stuff <laughs> so that 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 ties into to you know what we're saying yeah queuing system hopefully and tesla solution has almost always been if if it feels like there's queuing, then they just need to add more stuff. Um, they've done it a bit, like in the, at least in the um, the navigation, like I'll see where I'm getting directed to a different supercharger because the closest one it's has like a little clock busy. on it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's, that's a step. Um, but I, I think what Electrified is talking about is you show up at the station and you've got people coming in from both sides and it's a question of who got there first and who goes yeah, first. Yeah, and, and it's not it's not always clear. Um, in the Bay Area, uh, when I was charging, uh, and I didn't, I couldn't necessarily charge at home at this time, and you had a lot of new Model 3 owners, and we had people pull up, they don't see the queue, some guy just pulls just up, cut up. <laughs> and he pulls in, and he pulls in nose first, too. So, oh, <laughs> so he, he, he really doesn't know. And then I have to get out and say, um... There's a line. See that line? You need to be back there. <laughs> and also, you need to back in. So clearly, this person is uh, is a now, newbie. When I was in Las Vegas, I saw some very interesting behavior. I haven't seen it so much here in LA, but there's a, a fairly large mall with a supercharger in Vegas. And what would happen is people would show up, they would charge, they would get to the 80%, and they would be told, you know, time to disconnect. They would get out, unplug, and then get back in their car and just sit there. Because parking was such a premium, they didn't want to move from where they were parked at the supercharger. And, and they, they didn't, didn't want to care. pay. They, didn't, they want to pay the idle fees, so they uh -huh. would unplug and just stay there. And that happened over and over and over again. You know, um, they've already had to modify on like the version 4 superchargers. They've had to modify uh, the, the pedestal to take like a, you know, like a tap payment type thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. They could, with without too much hardware. A little camera, some AI action going a on. A little there. camera <laughs> letting you know if the, if the stall is occupied. So a separate signal from the, the uh, vehicle being plugged in. Sure. And that would also help with the, with the Rivian issue or the, the foreign EV issue where you can't quite tell like you, you, you might there? get a signal that a stall is open, but it's actually like a Rivian that had to park in a, such a way that it's taking right. up two spots. Um, it sort of solves itself though, because I guess with the newer ones, they're going to have larger, longer charging cables anyway. Um, Supposedly. I but, haven't seen one yet. So. But hardware wise, it would be a kind of a small thing to have a little camera just in and just say, okay, is this, is the spot taken or not? Uh, and that could help with, uh, icing and, and that kind of, that kind of thing. Oh, I've unplugged, but I'm still, still taking the spot. Um, you know, I mean, it could read yeah. a license plate. I mean, might be, might be privacy concerns, but there are solutions. <laughs> yeah, there are. Yeah. Well, uh, well, um, 
Let's see. I mean, are we done with that? Is there, there might be some. I, I think we've kind of gone that one into the ground. You know? Okay. <laughs> well, I, I wanted to give a little bit of an update. Um, a few episodes ago, um, you know, I talked about having test driven some of the uh, Volkswagen Group uh, vehicles. Um, a friend of mine was interested in a uh, Audi e-tron GT, I believe it was, and Sweet. and I ch I checked it out, you know. And, but then I also checked out the, the Porsche Taycan and, uh, and to me, that was such a much better vehicle. Like the, the Audi e-tron, it just wasn't cool enough. Like the performance wasn't great enough. Like the, the, the buttons, all this stuff. I just found the model three, a much better vehicle for a much, much cheaper price too. <laughs> uh, new, I don't remember exactly, but new is over a hundred K and, um, and you know but but there was a huge depreciation so like you know I for a two-year-old vehicle it was it was like half the price but still even at that price for like you know used or whatever um it was still not a good a deal as the model three better performance and better charging all these other things um so then i also test drove the porsche taycan though and even though you can probably get a model three with better performance and it's a very expensive vehicle. It had all the cool points <laughs> that, that made it worth the cost. I mean, how much is a Porsche anyway? Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, you pay a premium for the name. So, but it was a very cool car when I drove it. Um, a very nice cockpit sort of feel, very driver oriented, very nice. Um, even the, the touchscreen was a nice interface though. It had, some nice knob work too. The steering okay. wheel was great. Um, and you had a nice curved binnacle in front of you, as well as the display that basically went all the way across to the passenger side, which was cool. And then nice. also a heads up display. And, <laughs> Gee, and it had, just hear that, yeah. <laughs> and it had Porsche steering. So all the cool stuff. Um, so anyway, we talked about it on the show and that was my advice to my friend. I was like, yeah, you know, that Audi, man, but the, that Porsche was really cool. Uh, but you know, I, I was like, okay, but it's really expensive. Well, uh, my friend, uh, found one, I think he, uh, it's a, it's a few years old maybe, but, uh, he's getting it for around, I forget exactly, but 65 K and he's wow. very happy with it. And I'm sure you can again, find a, a model three that might have better performance, but there's more than just, uh, there's you know, off the, the line acceleration. Yeah. 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 Uh, you want so some that of the nicer, the refinements, you know, the refinements, the handling that like how cool the interior looks and it looks great too. It's definitely more interesting looking than the model three. I mean, I drive the model three. I'm a fan of the model three. Uh, Doug DeMiro got a lot of, uh, hate for calling it a nice appliance car. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but, um, it is, I mean, it is, it's, it's, some you know the model three i again i love it i drive it uh but it, it cool factor it's nowhere near as yeah, cool as porsche. this porsche, it's, porsche. <laughs> <laughs> okay. it's just not a porsche all right uh <laughs> and here's a porsche that's an ev and it's pretty cool you know yeah um i i, I followed the taycan up to big bear a couple of weeks ago and i mm -hmm. gotta admit just watching the car on the road it's a beautiful car it, it's got some great style to it, it it's it's everything you expect out of a Porsche visually. Yeah. Speaking. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, I can't, I can't hate on that car. That take in is, is pretty cool. And, um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's not something I would necessarily buy just cause I'm a little more <laughs> prudent, I guess, <laughs> uh, or, and I don't feel like I drive enough to justify it or, you know, or I'm not that, um, yeah you know, ready to feel like I have enough disposable income to just drop on something like that. Um, but it is pretty cool. And if, if that's the kind of car you want and you're going to spend that kind of money, then I think it's uh, a reasonable purchase. It's, so. it, it's interesting. You brought up the depreciation of the Audi. Um, there was a, uh, a podcast I was listening to and they were discussing the Mercedes EQS and the, the fact that they're something like 110,000 right now, if you want to go buy one, but you can buy one for two. No, he actually, the, the gentleman actually pulled up an ad two years mm -hmm. old, 12,000 miles, and you could get it for forty seven thousand. <laughs> yeah, I that's the I whole mean, the, the appreciation was insane. But that, that that's car. is the whole EV industry right now. It is. It is. Um, that was pretty stark. <laughs> uh, and you know, and 
Maybe, I mean, Tesla may be driving it because uh, given how much they've cut the cost on the, well, I guess it's China who's really driving it, but it's Tesla's response to China and, uh, um, you know, that all those EVs, the depreciation is huge, um, you know, and this would be a good time to, you know, to ma maybe lease those cars or buy used. I mean, yeah, I think they're used. great used deals out there. Um, and it's funny because just two years ago, it was upside down. Used yep. cars were more expensive yep. than new ones because because a, a used car you could get immediately, right? A well, new one you had to wait a month or something. You know, at, at the risk of sounding like heresy, uh, uh -huh. I, w I was actually pricing Chevy Bolts this last uh -huh. week for for a reason. And you can buy a Chevy Bolt uh, EUV, which is their little SUV version. Yeah, two hundred forty seven miles of range, uh, twenty twenty three with six thousand miles to ten thousand miles. You could pick it up for about nineteen k. And you know why not, right? Now that I mean, that that literally is <laughs> that literally is a an appliance vehicle. Um, it, it, is, it is. It's it's four wheels. It goes. It's got, you know, it's it's a full EV. It's not hybrid. And, and but it's it's got enough range that it might as well be. Yeah. It, you know, you don't you don't need it to be a hybrid. You know, you 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 drive. Say someone drives. I don't know, fifty. Maybe they yeah, drive so ninety miles to to get so, to work. So, so the used market's actually, if you're in the market for a used EV, I mean, this is a great time. I mean, yeah. you can find some deals if you're willing to look. Yeah. And, and honestly, any of those cars are, are fine. Um, you know, I, I am still, uh, I, I still think Tesla is the best um, value, um, even used, maybe used, uh, you know, Tesla's the, the best value in terms of, uh, you know, the, the EV-ness of it. Sure. Uh, and then even like the features, like, you know, if you can just pay 99 bucks and get <laughs> FSD, I mean, that's a huge, great feature, uh, it that, is. you know, a lot of premium vehicles don't even have. Um, so, you know, I still, I would still suggest the, the Tesla, but you know, if, if you want to bolt I, another thing with my, my friend, you know, I was trying to push him towards like, you know, maybe waiting for a performance three or whatever. And, and uh and use my uh use my referral Your code referral and i'll <laughs> and i'll and i'll and i'll give you a uh a uh a home charger you know a whole uh, a home charging unit because uh, that's you know because you get enough referral credits for that but um he, he's in the atlanta georgia area and he just you know there are teslas everywhere for him yeah, so he sees them all three else. everywhere so yeah you want something different that's fine you know that's yeah, a I, okay I way it. to feel uh, I mean, that's nothing I ever worried about, but you know, it's a reasonable thing for and, some people. And the reason I was looking at the bolt is the person that wants the car, um, they're not comfortable with the Tesla. They're, they're, hmm. they're a little afraid of the minimalistic interior uh, and okay, the yeah. size of the car. And they're looking at the bolt, which is a little more conventional, you know, what they're yeah. used to. Uh, I mean, another reason i suggest the tesla is just its safety uh i mean in terms of crash safety it's uh, uh without a doubt it's pretty great uh i had another friend that had a bolt and then got in an accident uh like got t-boned in an intersection or something and uh and she got out and she was sort of scared like oh is this the car gonna <laughs> is it gonna blow up now or the what car's you gonna know catch fire incinerate yeah itself. and the, i mean the I, I don't remember exactly. I mean, it doesn't have the kind of display that the Tesla does, but it, you know, the display kind of went nuts and she got out and she was scared and she, and she was like, I'm never getting this again. Uh, and she went from that to a Model Y, right? Uh, which is, you know, much more safe, a little bigger too. Like the, bigger. the Bolt was a small car. So, um, so yeah, I, I suggest those things, like if you're going to be driving with your family and that sort of thing. Uh, but, you know, if you can get a cheap Bolt and get around, uh, I wasn't a fan with how that car drives, you know, it's got the sort of front wheel stuff. And if you try to step on it, like the traction is terrible because of course the, the weight shifts back and then the front wheels Dif just kind of spin. Different market. It's a yeah, different market. exactly. Exactly. So, oh, well, anyhow, uh, so, uh, I, did you have anything else or I, I think we're good on this side. Um, you know, there's one more thing I wanted to mention. There was, uh, um, related to the FSD stuff, uh, our buddy, friend of the show, <laughs> Dan O'Dowd, uh, put out a couple a videos. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you still have rolling heads? <laughs> uh, well, it, I mean, I don't know. 
I don't know what they're trying to accomplish with that video because it's so preposterous. Um, <laughs> the, the video I'm talking about is basically what he's trying to say and uh, the messaging in the video is that even FSD 12.3 uh, is unsafe for yeah. children, right? And so here's the setup. The car's going along, I think at 25 miles an hour or so on a dirt road, right? So a dirt road, <laughs> you're not going to have very quick stopping, right? And they have a mannequin of a child, right? And so the, the tide of the child is pretty low. Like it's barely over the hood of the Model 3, right? Or was it a, a Y? I don't know which vehicle it was, but it was barely over the hood of that vehicle. And so basically there's somebody with a string on this mannequin and the mannequin, Holy I guess, it. is on a little track. Yeah, they pull And along. basically just as the car gets right up to where that mannequin is, they pull it out, right? <laughs> there's less than like a, a second to react to this thing that kid no matter who was driving that kid was getting run over right <laughs> and so i don't know what what he was trying to uh you know how that was going to help his case and you even see from the video as soon as the kid comes out uh emergency braking activates so the car responds faster than a human could in terms of right. trying to slow down so i don't know if that kid would have survived but his chances of surviving was higher with the Tesla stuff, yeah, but, but, but an object in motion wants to stay in motion. So <laughs> yeah, especially if you're on a dirt road, you know, you slam on the brakes, the car is going to, you know, slide. slide for a bit. So it was just a ridiculous thing to, I, it just wasn't helping us for any reasonable, rational person, uh, that has a basic understanding. I don't see how that helps this case. Um, so what, what, what was the old, uh, uh, from the, 60s unsafe at any speed oh yeah that was uh ralph nader about nader, the nader. that's what right. was the vehicle corvair corvair wasn't it oh, i forget chevy chevy corvair <laughs> Un the, the the issue of that car was that i think the gas tank was like like inside <laughs> basically inside the rear bumper <laughs> <laughs> so if you're parked and someone <laughs> hits you the heart you know, everything blows up <laughs> that's that's why i was unsafe at any speed because someone else yeah. might hit you and the whole thing blows up um, worried, I thought it was something else, though. Well, that was, uh, the Pintos blew up. The Corvair would lift the back end because it had a solid axle in the back. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. It, it didn't handle really well, supposedly. Well, you know, <laughs> good good for him for making it. Cars are much more safe now. So, uh, you know, that, that's, that's progress. Unless you're Dan O'Dowd. Yeah. Un <laughs> unless you're a, a child mannequin with a spring loaded neck. Um, <laughs> you know. On that uh, happy note. <laughs> yeah, on that happy note. Well, hey, uh, you know, thanks. Uh, let, let, let's just see. Uh, let me just see if there are any comments we didn't get to here. Um, as we're as we're live here. Let's see. I'm sure uh, there's, a few. there's always a few. <laughs> okay. Well, I think we're I think we're good. Let's see. Someone asks, will FSD twelve take me from LA to New York City and recognize tolls? I you know what I tell you what? Um it won't I, there's no way you'll go from LA to New York City without any interventions. But the the number of interventions for me has gone way down, um, and uh, part of that is it taking a much more natural uh, path when making turns. The thing is, though, it's sometimes it's cutting an edge. So maybe maybe that's the thing. Maybe people tend to cut the corners too sharp, and, yeah. and that's what it's learning. Um, but I did something I hadn't seen before. It was recognizing tolls, but I, I don't know that I was doing anything about it. I was getting a message that said, toll booth detected ahead. Uh, and sometimes it was wrong. Sometimes it said that, <laughs> and it, it wasn't a toll booth. I don't know what um, what it's training on. But you know, from from uh, the DC area to this place in Ohio, there's, there are a lot of easy pass uh, things you go through. And it was seeing them, but I don't know that it was necessarily doing anything proper about it. Um, and sometimes I let it, I let it do its thing and it slowed down and then it sped up. And, you know, there's a little bit, when you leave a, a toll booth, there's a little bit of ambiguity of where you're going because you all go. the cars yeah. kind of just sort of filter in. <laughs> But I let it do its thing, and it and it seemed okay. Um, I think maybe it wanted to go faster than it really should have been going. Um, yeah, you, but you it worked. Yeah, you might have trouble in the in the mountains. The FSD, at least where I'm at, FSD has a real issue in the mountains. Um, it's going faster yeah, than it should. Going way too fast, despite the posted signs. 
And in fact, I saw something recently in the in the notes about don't use FSD in certain conditions and mountains was one of them. No. Uh, you know, one of the new features uh, in the in the city driving is this, um, like you have the option of, of telling it to have an offset for the speed, right? Yes. And typically I'm either 10% high or five miles an hour fast or whatever. Um, and I had to turn that off uh, because for me, it wasn't good. I've heard people say, oh, it's it's been pretty great. For me, it hasn't been good at all. Often, um, like if it's a road and I, sometimes it's like way under speed, I don't know what it's freaked out about. So I have to step on the accelerator to speed it up. Yep. And then typically it will it will go the speed that I accelerate it to. Cause then it's like, okay, things are going okay at the speed. Some, sometimes. So this is just my experience. Yeah. But then sometimes I, I just let it go and it's speeding way too fast. Uh, once it was, <laughs> it was trying to do 60 and a, and a, um, and like, uh, let's be realistic. It was trying to do 50 and a, and a 30 or 35. Um, and that's way too fast. I mean, you could drive that fast, but I'm like, I don't want, a ticket, you know, to slow down. Uh, so I had to just turn it off. It was, you know, the, the, you know, the five or 10% faster is just better, made more sense. And if I'm yeah. uncomfortable with how fast it's going, then I'll slow it down. But, uh, like it, it just picking was not, was not great for me. So anyway, yeah. So sure answer is maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I mean, the short answer for the question was no, there's yeah. no way it's going to make it from LA to New York, uh, without an intervention. So, uh, and that was promised what in 2016 <laughs> or something. Um, so it yeah, promised. it's not happening <laughs> and every year it was promised again. So, um, anyway, uh, all right. Well, Hey, thanks everybody for joining us today. Uh, um, you know, thanks to Danny for helping, uh, produce in the background. Uh, yeah, yeah. you can, <laughs> you can reach us mainly on the, our website, teslamotorsclub.com, follow us on the socials, uh, and all that stuff. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this was episode number 62. Laters.